Welcome to Key Tech. Please describe this channel if you are interesting in today's video. After the signing of the tripartite agreement between the United States, Japan and the Netherlands, China has been slightly passive in the semiconductor field. Japan has restricted the shipment of 23 core making equipment, covering the scope of 45 nanometers. Similarly, the Netherlands has also officially announced that it can only ship 38 nanometers chip manufacturing. The 1980s photolithography machine. Faced with the pressing of the Biden team, the Chinese top management couldn't bear it anymore and directly launched comprehensive countermeasures, while Micron became the first cannon fodder. Results, and has given an opinion to stop the procurement. Faced with sudden changes, the United States chose to push Korean companies into this tug-of-war. China sees, can China still make concessions? Micron refuses to review results. The reason why Micron became the first cannon fodder is also self-inflicted step by step. In the 1990s, if the United States had not crushed the Japanese memory chip industry in the name of anti-dumping, there would be no such thing as Micron now. Subsequently, precise sanctions were imposed on Chinese enterprises such as Yangtze River Storage, Fujian Jinhua, and UMC, and it is now the third place in the world. From a purely technical point of view, there is still a big gap between Micron and Korean companies in the field of memory chips. Samsung and SK Hynix account for more than 50% of the market. If the United States is not behind it, it will be difficult for Micron to reach such a height. Naturally, Micron deserves to be cannon fodder. In 2018, Micron's total revenue in the Chinese market exceeded 119.2 billion yuan, accounting for 58% of the total revenue. It can be said that it has made a lot of money, but after the chip rules were launched, everything began to change. In 2022, there will be only 22.8 billion yuan in revenue left, with a plunge rate of more than 81%. Once the safety review comes into effect, it is likely that even this 22.8 billion in revenue will be gone. The Chinese market consumes nearly 70% of the world's chips, and it still has unlimited potential. As the CEO of NVIDIA said, there is only one Chinese market. Micron naturally knows what it means to leave the Chinese market, but its attitude is surprising and clear. Rejected the results of the security review, still thinking about relying on the Biden team to save the defeat. After the violation results were officially released, Micron stated, the relevant results are under evaluation and are actively communicating with relevant Chinese authorities. From such words, important information can be interpreted. It is to let the Chinese market continue to make concessions and to withdraw the violation results through pressure. Judging from Micron's statement, it is still relatively mild. There is only one explanation left, that is, Micron knows that its own products have problems and does not think about how to defend them but let the United States and South Korean companies exert pressure. Trying to use the threat of cutting off the supply of China's memory chip products, so as to gain a corresponding advantage in the negotiation. But obviously such an approach is not what China likes. Initiating the security review of Micron is actually thinking of the effect of killing chickens to warn monkeys. In the market, what capital cares about is profit. This approach of the Biden team has caused fighting within the nest. After launching the security review on Micron, 
Biden called Yinsia immediately, once Micron is forced to withdraw from the Chinese market, Korean companies must not fill the gap in the market. It is impossible to compromise so easily, but expecting China to make concessions, the Biden team may have really miscalculated. Could China back down? When the United States launched the Chip Four Party Alliance, South Korea hesitated to join and gave the condition of not giving up the Chinese market. Later, the Biden team exempted all restrictions and still did not let Korean companies compromise. It is difficult to achieve the goal by cheating. Such a decisive attitude is naturally even more difficult for Korean companies to accept. South Korea has never dared to betray the United States, but when it comes to issues of interest, South Korean capital is still strong enough. More than 50% of its share comes from the Chinese market. Losing it means that business operations will be hindered, so this time fighting is enough wonderful. The purpose of the United States launching chip rules is to isolate China's semiconductor industry so as to maximize the interests of American companies. I never thought it would have a counterproductive effect. China has fully accelerated the establishment of independent industries. Triggered a chain reaction. South Korea was reluctant to join the Chip Four Party Alliance when the United States announced it, with the caveat that it not give up the Chinese market. Later, the Biden team lifted all restrictions, but they refused to let Korean companies make any concessions. Cheating presents a challenge in achieving the objective. Naturally, Korean businesses find it even harder to accept such a firm stance. Although South Korea has never dared to betray the United States, its capital is still sufficiently strong when it comes to matters of interest. The Chinese market accounts for more than half of its market share. Losing it would impede business operations, so this time, fighting is sufficient and wonderful. The United States introduced chip regulations in order to isolate China's semiconductor industry and advance the interests of American businesses. I never anticipated that it would work against me. The development of independent industries has been greatly accelerated in China. Sparked a series of events. At present, Various countries and regions have invested more funds in independent technology research and development and have given up on the U.S. technology system. The atmosphere of global cooperation has collapsed. Today's advantages are in the hands of China. It is almost impossible to wait for China to make concessions. Impossible, what do you think about this?